At Cash and Carry Kitchens, we know every family is different. The Murray's kitchen needs to also function as an office and playroom. The Rashids, with three kids, need a storage solution for the countless cereal boxes. The cuisine-obsessed Duffies want cutting-edge appliances, like a boiling water tap. No matter what your family needs, we're here to guide you through the process of creating the perfect kitchen. Book a free design consultation today at cashandcarrykitchens.ie. Cash and Carry Kitchens, built by our family, tailored for yours. Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Dance and Wax Programme. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Liza. you often noticed how important floors are in the appearance of a home, it is a fact that mellow, gleaming waxed floors bring out the beauty of everything in the room, adding a rich charm that you can acquire in no other way. Throughout America, there are countless floors that have been made more beautiful every year with genuine Johnson's Wax. Every application of this famous floor wax gives increased protection and beauty. Johnson's Wax gets down into the pores of the wood, seals out dirt, protects the finish against scuffing feet and sharp heels and does away forever with tiresome floor scrubbing. There are more than 100 labor-saving uses for Johnson's Wax in your home. It protects and beautifies furniture and woodwork, windowsills, parchment lampshades, and leather goods. You'll find these extra uses listed on the familiar red and yellow package of genuine Johnson's Wax. You can buy this wax in either the paste or liquid form, or in the cream wax, specially formulated for furniture and woodwork. Try some tomorrow. National Apple Week has come and gone. So is National Donut Week. But do you know what this is? This is National Gee Whiz, We Positively Gotta Make Out That Christmas Shopping List Today For Sure Week. <laughs> and here at 79 Wistful Vista, pens in hand, wrinkles in brow, and no ideas in mind, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, for goodness sakes, McGee, think. You're not being any help at all on this Christmas list. I'm thinking. You're no such a thing. You're just sitting there drawing little pictures. Well, Dad, rather all deep thinkers draw pictures while they're thinking. Uh... And what you draw shows what kind of a thinker you are. Uh... You see these triangles and circles with the dots in them? That shows that at heart I'm a big business typhoon. <laughs> you mean tycoon. Tycoon was a ball player with Detroit. Uh... <laughs> that was Ty Cobb, dearie. Well, then, what's a typhoon? It's a disease. My sister had typhoon, and all her hair came out. <laughs> That's typhoid. Come to think of it, a typhoon is a big wind. Something like a Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that scribbling of yours proves you're just a big wind, huh? <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, 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 there's Mrs. Uppington. The slice of lemon in the social finger bowl. Yeah. <laughs> to see her standing there with her head so high, you'd think she only had one chin. Yeah. Come in. Don't think she won't. Ah, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're at home. Would you care to take a few tickets on our club woman's raffle? Oh, you're raffling off a club woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Uppy. I wouldn't know what to do with her if I want. <laughs> now, you please, Mr. McGee. Ah, stop it, you big tea. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> What's the raffle for, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, for a very worthy cause, my dear. Oh. We're going to present the city with a new statue. Oh, a statue of who? 
Uh, we'll think of somebody. <laughs> and now, how many chances will you take? Well, how much are the tickets, Abigail? Fifteen cents. And the first prize is a large sum in cash. Okay, I'll take one. Oh, uh, so will I. Here's a quarter, Mrs. Uppy. Here's a half a buck. You got change, Uppy? Well, no, I haven't, Miss McGee. Uh-huh. Now, let me see. I owe Mrs. McGee ten cents and you thirty-five cents. Yes. That's forty-five cents that I owe you both. Yes. Oh, here, I have a dollar bill. Have you got uh, fifty-five cents more in change? Nope. Me oh. either. But I got another half a dollar. Oh, well, you let me take that. Uh-huh. Then I think I can work it out. Now, let me see. I owe you fifty-five cents. Uh-uh. A dollar five with that other half I gave you. Well, uh, yeah. well, why don't you deduct the tickets, which is 30 cents from the half a buck I gave you, and... Oh, no, you can't do that. <laughs> well, why don't you take the quarter and... and... Oh, that won't do. I tell you, how about... Uh... No, no. Oh, oh, I know, I know. Now, here, you take this half dollar, and I... Oh, no, that's wrong, isn't it? Now, let me see. How much have I here? A dollar and a quarter, and we owe you 30 cents. Yes, exactly. 30 cents from a dollar and a quarter is 95 cents. Yes. Now, has anyone a nickel? Here, here's a nickel. Oh, splendid. And here's a dollar. Huh? And here are your two tickets. Oh, and thanks. thank you so much. Goodbye. Well. <laughs> dollar and a quarter, two tickets for 15 cents. $1.35, that'll be, let's see, I gave her a half a buck and she... Hey, somebody got gypped on that deal. Was it us? Well, search me, you ought to know. You're the big business Tyrone. That's typhoon. It is not. A typhoon is a bottle that squirts soda water. That's a siphon. Siphons are snakes. <laughs> Well, then what's a python? A python is a snake that looks like... Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hello there, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Pipper. Hi, Pucky. <laughs> Say, uh, do you mind if I borrow my coal shovel? Why, certainly not, Mr. Gildersleeve. You can borrow your coal shovel any time you want. Yeah, but don't forget to bring it back, Gildy. Last time you borrowed your coal shovel, you kept it pretty near two weeks. I'm awfully sorry about that, McGee. But I paid a lot of money for that coal shovel, and... Well, I like to take a look at it now and then. <laughs> what you wanted for? <laughs> what did you want it for, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I wasn't home this morning, and when they delivered my five tons of coal, the driver dumped it right on my front lawn. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. I called the coal company, and they said one of the neighbors told them to dump it there. If I ever lay my hands on the long nose, interfering, meddlesome fool. Ah, 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 ah. Now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Be careful what you say about me. Uh. <laughs> so it was you, was it? Was I. McGee, you ruined my lawn. I've got to shovel five tons of coal into the basement. Well. And by George, you're going to help me. Who, me? Yes, you. Gildersleeve, if you ain't the most brazen, high handed lint head I ever saw. Here I do you a favor by telling the coal men where to put the coal, and then you come barging in here and asking for your coal shovel to put the coal in the basement and demand that I help. Why, up? Why, 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 that's un-American. <laughs> I'd refuse to do it, dearie. He can't force you. No. Oh, I can't, eh? No. I'll drag him out there by the scruff of the neck. Who'll drag who out by what scruff of whose neck? You lay one pinky on me, Gildersleeve. <laughs> and I'll push your chest back up where it used to be. <laughs> you will, eh? Why, you little pup start. I'll shake you till your eyes roll around like a pinball game. <laughs> oh, yeah. You big muscle-bound mus- er, muscle moose. I'll choke you till that foghorn voice of yours sounds like a penny whistle. I'll do worse than that. Molly. Yes, dearie. Take Gildersleeve's name off of that Christmas list. It isn't on. Well, write it on and then scratch it off again. I'll just give somebody else that Daisy Air rifle. You're a hard man, McGee. (laughs) Gee whiz, I... I've always wanted a daisy air rifle. <laughs> I'll bet you don't know what I was going to give you. What? I won't tell. Oh, come on, I told you. Well, but you're not going to do it. You're mad at me. I ain't mad at you, Gil. Honest. <laughs> what are you going to give me? Well... <laughs> 
You know how you've always wanted a boy scout knife with six blades. <laughs> oh, boy, a real scout knife, huh? One that's got a thing on it that you can hang it on your belt with? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I give up. <laughs> Look, Gildy, we, we should not argue like this here. It's too, it's too near Christmas. We ought to be full of goodwill and the Christmas spirit, brotherhood and love for your neighbor and all stuff like that there. I'll help you shovel in your dirty old coal. <laughs> It isn't just on account of I'm giving you that scout knife. Gildersleeve, that knife never entered my mind. Yeah. For a while there, I thought it was going to enter your throat. <laughs> now, if you two anthracite athletes are going to shovel that coal, go ahead and do it. Okay. Get your coat and hat, McGee. It's pretty cold out there. Okay. I got an old coat right here in this closet. Yeah, well, hurry up. Oh. 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 Gotta straighten up that closet one of these days. <laughs> Come on, Front yard Gildersleeve's got here, ain't it, Molly? Oh, it's just beautiful. Well, it certainly is. Even that big pile of coal is very effective. Mm -hmm. Contrasted with the white snow and all. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you two talking about? You've seen my front yard a thousand times. Pipe down, Gildersleeve. We're planting the scene. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, get to work, boys. I can hardly wait to see McGee swing that shovel. Don't worry about me. I ain't so bad. Well, hello there, kid. Oh, hi, old time. Hello there, there old time. some plum pudding for the holidays? Best you ever had. Make it myself. Will it keep? Indefinitely, daughter. Fine. Ask us again next year. <laughs> ah. That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hear it. Did you hear it? <laughs> the way I hear it. Wait a minute. How about you, Throckmorton? Want to order plum pudding? No, I don't. Mm, good, not. The way I hear it, one fellow says, tell a feller, say, he says, all right. Hey, wait a minute. Either of you folks want to order any mincemeat? Not me. I don't believe so. Uh, okay. One fellow says, tell a feller, say, he says, I see you're listening to Phil McGee and Molly. Gonna hear him again next week at this time? No, says tell a feller. Not if they're this week next time. <laughs> well, sorry you kids don't want any plum pudding. It's going to be mighty good. <laughs> I didn't even know you could cook, old-timer. Can't, Johnny. But if I get enough orders, by criminy, I'll learn. Go on, kid. <laughs> All right, McGee, get busy. Well, you better start it off, Gildy. It's your shovel. Well, we can't rush into this now. Well, now, listen. One of you better start, or I'll go back to the house and bring Uncle Dennis over. He'll do oh, it. Oh, no, 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 no. Get busy, Gildersleeve. Come on, snap in there. All right. That's it. There. <laughs> oh. Now try shoveling some in with the window open. <laughs> I thought I told you to go down there and open that basement window, McGee. I did open the basement window. You threw that in the living room. <laughs> Here, let me take that shovel. 
I'll show you how it ought to be done. With rhythm. What do you mean, rhythm? He means you've really got to swing that pole, Porter. <laughs> I didn't like it either. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Well, hello, folks. Hi, Hilo. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? I mean the way Gildersleeve's staring at me. What have I done? If what you're going to do that fascinates me, my boy. <laughs> what's he going to do, Gildy? You know as well as I do what he's going to do. Huh? He's going to give out with some advertising. Well, so what? I want to see how he gets into it, that's all. Two men standing over a pile of coal with a shovel. Now, how can he get into Johnson's self-polishing glow coat from that situation? <laughs> Why, it's perfectly simple. What happens when you shovel coal in the snow? You get your feet muddy. Mm -hmm. You track it into the kitchen. But do your wives care? Certainly not. Their kitchen linoleum is protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. The no-rubbing polish that shines as it dries. All she has to do is wipe up the muddy tracks with a damp cloth. No rubbing, no scrubbing, no mopping. Why, <laughs> Johnson's glow coat writes its own sales talk in this situation. By George, I guess it does. <laughs> Didn't even have to give it any thought, did you, Mr. Wilcox? Why, of course not. I just looked down at that pile of coal there in the snow, and there it was, in black and white. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, folks. <laughs> Someday, mark my words, that guy's going to get stumped. And you know what'll happen then? No, what? You'll cut the stump up into boards, build a floor, and cover it with linoleum and go on from there. <laughs> uh, well, Gildy, what do you say we knock off for a little rest? Oh, that's a good idea. I, well, for goodness sakes, you've thrown one shovel full of coal into that cellar and you stop to rest. Oh. I'm going to go back to the house and finish that Christmas shopping list. Hey, Molly, make us a pot of coffee, will you? We'll be kind of tired and cold before long. Yeah, the way you've been working, I'd suggest tea and lady fingers. I'll be back in the hop with the stuff. Oh. <laughs> well, let's say we get going, Frank Gildy. Yes, yes, I guess we're better. Yeah. Hey, you start, McGee. I want to light a cigar. No, you start. I want to unwrap a stick of gum. Well, that's all right. No hurry. Yeah. This coal has been on the ground two million years. I guess it can wait five minutes longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say so. It's the Russian scurry of modern living that's devitalizing the human race. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Some gum, Gildy? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, have a cigar? No, thanks. Uh, ah, there's nothing harder in the world than shoveling coal, is there? Hi, mister. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, little girl. Hi, sis. Hi. What you doing? Who's watching? We're shoveling this coal into Mr. Gildersleeve's basement, and we're very busy. So you better run we along. We got steam heat at our house, I bet you. Well, so have I, little girl. Well, then what you want the coal for? The coal is what makes the steam, sis. <laughs> that's that's right, little girl. Oh, how can all that black coal make all that white steam? Now, look, sis, we ain't got time to delve into the physical and chemical aspects of the matter, but roughly, the steam is the result of combustion in the form of a vapor. You know what a vapor is. Sure I do, I bet you. We got one on our windshield. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Windshield vapor. No, 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 little girl. Hmm? Let me explain this. Steam is the result of the evaporation of water under extreme heat. Now, you know what makes the whistle blow on a steam engine. Sure. The engineer. Yes. <laughs> now, wait a minute, sis. The simple fact remains that we got to get this coal shoveled in, see? Mm -hmm. Like everybody else, Mr. Gildersleeve has got to keep warm this winter, you know. Gee, does, does everybody in the world use coal, mister? Practically, yes. Well, with few exceptions, such as Ireland. In Ireland, they burn peat. Peat who? <laughs> Not peat anybody, just peat. Oh, an orphan, huh? <laughs> no, not an orphan. A peat, little girl, is semi-carbonized vegetable matter. Well, gee... Hmm? <laughs> You better let me handle this, Gildersleeve. Yes. Now, look, little girl. All righty. I'll try to explain. Gee, that'll be peachy, mister. Go ahead. Well, I will if you'll quit interrupting me. You see, the coal... I the... won't interrupt you anymore, I bet you. Uh, that's fine. Now then, you see, Because coal... interrupting people isn't polite, is it? No, it isn't. Now, for the love of peace. If you love peace, why do you burn him? <laughs> oh, sure. Take it, Gildy. Okay. <laughs> Now, look here, little girl. <laughs> We're very busy, so you run along and play so we can well, get... I can't, I bet you. Not till I give you the message. What message? My daddy went hunting and he brought back a deer. He wants to know if you and Mr. McGee can come over tomorrow night for a vanishing dinner. <laughs> oh, 
you mean a venison dinner, don't you, sis? Do I? <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, you tell your father we'll be delighted to come, little girl. Tell him that for me, too, sis. This is the first we've ever been invited to your house. Yes, first time for me, also. I know it. Papa said he couldn't resist the opportunity, I bet you. What opportunity? This is just a venison dinner, isn't it? Sure, but he said he could hardly wait to see you two passing the buck to each other at close range. <laughs> the King's Men sing The Bad Humor Man. <laughs> Better fly. Here comes the enemy of girls and boys. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Hear his bell. Hear him yell. Drop your philosophies and drop your toys and run pell mell. Tingling, tingling, tingling. It's the bad humor man. Tingling, tingling, tingling. With a frown on his pan. Oh, he hates his job and he hates his feet. Hates everyone on the street. So he sings ding a ling, ding a ling, as he goes on his way. With his wagon rumbling, he keeps grumbling. Gee, it's an awful day. <laughs> Up every morning at the break of day. What a lie, what a lie, what a lie. Cold cup of coffee on the breakfast tray. What a wife, what a wife, what a wife. All day long. Bad humor man. Tingling, tingling, tingling. I got a frown on my pan. Oh, I don't like anything, no sirree. I hate people and they hate me. Grouchy old feller, indeed is he. Ought to hang him to a sour apple tree. Come along, come along, come along. We can stop him today. When he starts in grumbling, send him tumbling on. You're just as grimy, but are you as groggy as I am, Gildersleeve? I'm pretty tired, McGee. But it's good for us. Gives tone to the muscles. Yeah, and at the next tone signal, that's my muscle signing off. <laughs> it wasn't for that scout knife you're giving me, Gildersleeve. Oh, here comes Molly with a pahata ha hot coffee. Welcome, Mrs. McGee. Welcome. Well, well. Which one of you boys is Amos? Yes. <laughs> Now, don't twit us, Molly. We're all wore out. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Will Mammy's little cold black rose have a mug of javin? Yeah, thanks. You know, this is mighty nice of you, Mrs. McGee. Oh, not at all, not at all. How many lumps, Mr. Gildersleeve? There's about a half a ton there. We'll be... be oh, oh, you mean sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two, please, and a few drops of cream. Uh, Where's no. the cream shake, Fisher, and Mrs. McGee and Mr. Gildersleeve? Hello. Good day, Mr. Hello, Bobby. Nick. Hi, Nick. Hey, I don't like to be making any derogatory terrible remarks, but why don't you wash your faces? <laughs> My goodness, I didn't know you could get so dirty on the radio. <laughs> well, you can't shovel coal without getting a little grimy, Nick. Too bad you weren't here a couple of hours ago, Mr. DePopolis. You could have helped them. Oh, not me, Cupid. It's too stony puss for me. My doctor says I must not do any violent exercises. You know, arthritis. Oh, have you got arthritis? Sure, he's my doctor, Dr. Stanopoulos Arthritis. <laughs> well, what's he treating you for, Nick? Two dollars a visit. Oh, well, what have you got? A dollar and a half, but my credit is good, sweetie. <laughs> now, now, this isn't getting us any place. Yeah. Where do you want to get, QP? My car is right around the corner. No, it's just an expression, Mr. DePopolis. I'm not going anywhere. I'm waiting to see these two chevaliers get the rest of that coal in. <laughs> we just stopped for a breathing spell, Mrs. McGee. Yeah, you don't mind if we breathe, do you? I don't care if you have bell-bottom pants. But I wish you'd get through and clean yourself up. Me too, QP. I think they are a disgraceful to the neighborhood. You know what I would do if I was shoveling all that coal? What would you do? 
I wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, I'd better be getting along, and don't forget, we want you all to come over to our house for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Hey, that's 11 months and two weeks away. <laughs> we can wait. So long, now. <laughs> Come on, boys. Get busy. You'll catch cold standing around here like this. Okay, Mrs. McGee. I'll take the rest of it. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 nice going, Gildersleeve. Uh, 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 thanks, chum. And I'll have to admit you've been a great help to me. Oh, it was nothing that any red-blooded, clean-living American boy wouldn't have done, Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, it was, McGee. Huh? My goodness, the way you've toiled and slaved to help me today, with your little biceps quivering and your frail little legs tottering. Uh, I ain't got legs like a frail. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? He says something about my frail little legs. Ain't leg. funny, McGee. <laughs> oh, well, they're all tired anyway. Now, come on. Put your coat on before you catch your death of cold. My coat? Where did I put my... <laughs> hey, you know what I done? No, oh, what'd you do, McGee? <laughs> when I went down to open your cellar window, I laid my coat down on the basement floor. <laughs> and you know where it is now? <laughs> down there in your basement under five ton of coal. What? <laughs> it's a good thing it's an old coat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it back to you in the spring, McGee. <laughs> uh, for goodness sake, McGee, I don't think that's anything to laugh about. Huh? Go down there right away and dig it out. Oh, no, sir, not me. I'm all wore out now. I was good. Yeah, you go home. Huh? Oh, Mr. McGee, I, I have wonderful news for you. What is it, Mrs. Uppington? You won first prize on our raffle. What? Well, that's Honestly, wonderful. I won yes. first prize? Yes, on you the did. Ra- now, oh. give me the ticket, Mr. McGee, and I'll give you the prize right now. The, the ticket? Yes. yes, the raffle tickets, McGee. Where are they? Why, hey, I, I left them tickets in my coat pocket, and my coat is down under the... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I wouldn't shovel five ton of coal again for a hundred dollars. Oh, but Mr. McGee, the prize is a hundred dollars. What? Yes. It is? Give me that shovel, Gildersleeve, and get out of my way. What are you going to do? I'm going to shovel five tons of coal again for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Come on. How many hours of work do you save in a year by using Johnson's self-polishing blow coat? Well, it's a good many, I can tell you. Enough to do plenty of other things. Bridge, movies, playing with your children, or just plain and fancy sitting around. Glow Coat is a valuable time saver. It does away with tiresome floor scrubbing and requires no rubbing or buffing. Practically no work at all from you. And yet, Glow Coat makes your floors very beautiful. Keeps the colors of your linoleum bright and fresh. Makes the linoleum last longer. No wonder Johnson's Glow Coat has gone on month after month increasing in popularity. If you're not a Glow Coat fan, try this easy-to-use floor polish just once on your kitchen floor. Oh, and by the way, when you're looking for a practical, inexpensive Christmas gift for your friends, why not consider either Johnson's Wax or Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat? I can assure you they'll be as welcome as they are useful. hundred bucks. Uh, silly me to bury my coat. Like this. Uh, look at these calluses. Uh, okay, Molly, okay, you've done enough. Hand me the shovel, I'll do the rest. Good night. Uh, good night, Hall. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. If you're the proud owner of one of those handsome new two-tone cars, let me make this suggestion. Keep the finish beautiful by protecting it occasionally with Car New, Johnson's sensational new auto polish. Car New will keep the finish looking like new and will save you work in the bargain because Car New actually cleans and wax polishes in one operation, two jobs at one and the same time. No longer is wax polishing expensive or laborious. Whether your car is old or new, give it this modern beauty treatment. Ask your dealer for Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the National Broadcasting Company. This is Chicago WMAQ.